Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing the last video in my um, QCE IA2 science um, series. So I've done how to do the biology IA2, I've done how to do the chemistry IA2. And today I am going to take you guys through how to get a 20 out of 20 on the physics IA2. So the physics IA2, you typically, if you are doing the normal sequence, you sort of have the option between um, projectile motion and electromagnetism. Now, projectile motion is probably going to be a lot easier to do, a lot easier data to work with, and just a lot easier in general. Now, a pretty big misconception when it comes to student experiments is that people think that if they do an easy experiment, then they won't get a 20 out of 20, but that is completely false. Always go with the easiest experiment possible, the one that the teacher recommends. Now, before I get started, at the end of the day, I'm not marking your assignment, your teacher is. So if your teacher ever tells you something specific, go with what they say because they are the one marking it. Even if you do not believe it is the right thing to do, they are the ones marking it, so do what they want. Now, I'm going to start us off, and I've got the syllabus down, not the syllabus, <laughs> the ISMG down the side here. I took this from one of the samples, so don't worry about the highlighting. The highlighting doesn't apply to my assignment, which I've got here. This is my actual assignment from 2023. Um, this highlighting was for the sample. So let's go through, and let's start off with, same as the other two, our easiest two marks that we are going to get. Now, our easiest marks we are ever going to get um, are going to be our communication marks. You literally cannot get um, an easier two marks. This is 10% of your assignment here. Okie dokie. Let's start down the bottom here with the easiest one. Acknowledgement of sources of information through appropriate use of referencing conventions. So... QCAA does not care what referencing system you use as long as it is a legitimate one. So most schools either use APA or Harvard. My school used APA 7, so that is the referencing you will see in my assignment here today. But again, it doesn't matter as long as you are doing it correctly. And there are a couple of different things you need to consider here. The first one is your in-text references. You need in-text references. And you need to make sure you know how to do them in a website and a book or whatever sources you use. The other thing is, at the very end, you need to have a reference list down here um do, 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 do. yes this is it and it should be in our alphabetical order now this assignment doesn't have as many references as some of my other ones but that is completely okay i've still got four i've still got almost 10 here and i actually got my first university lab report so basically a student experiment the other day and they recommend that we don't have over 12 references because that means we're not using the references properly. So it is completely okay if you have not as many for some assignments. Now, this is okay for the student experiment, but for the research investigation, considering research is in the name, um, you would want to have more references in your research investigation. Now, I'm going to take us back up the top. And before I continue on with communication, because formatting is included in communication, the formatting of my assignment here is very off because I converted it from a Google Doc to a Word Doc to a PDF. I don't know why, but this is the only copy I have left. And trust me, I did not hand it in looking like this. Now, appropriate use of genre conventions. So that includes your formatting basically so as long as we don't have things like this here this is bad so this changed um when i converted it to word but i didn't hand it in like this but you should not ever have tables running over two pages so that is a big example you can see here where i broke up my table just because it wouldn't fit on two pages so you can see that i have left a gap there other things with genre conventions is making sure we are doing this assignment in a good order and we have our title, which should be short, simple, really basic title of what you're doing. You need to have your heading, so I've got rationale, and then I'll have um, modifications, etc, etc. We need to be um, labelling our figures and tables correctly. So tables, the um, heading goes above the table, and then for a figure... 
like down here, the um, title goes below the figure. The other things that we should be looking at is in things like these sample calculations that we are using math type. We aren't just typing in random things like you wouldn't want to be typing in something like instead of meters per second squared, you would not want to be typing in something like meters s little top thing, carrot thing too. That is what you would do if you didn't have math type, but we need to be using our math type here. Other things that we need to do is in all calculations and all of this sort of stuff, we need to have our unit. So as you can see here, I've written launch angle degrees. And the other thing that um, a lot of people often forget about is in these ones, you need to be going with significant figures. Don't have numbers with like 10 decimal places. It doesn't mean anything. It takes up time. It takes up space. No one wants to read that. So when you get to your data, use your significant figures or pick a certain amount of decimal places for each thing and roll with that. Significant figures aren't technically meant to be assessed in here, but what can be assessed is your overall presentation. And if you've just got a billion decimal points going everywhere, it's not going to be very good. That's all I can really think of for this, for um, communication, except you will want to have your risk assessment in here. Now, as you can see, I've deleted mine just because um, it had the name of my school and then like the full names of the other people in my group. And I didn't want to like put their names out there as well. So we won't look at that. And yeah, so that is all about genre conventions. And then the last thing is fluent and concise use of scientific language and representations. So representations, that means that if we are going to be fluent and concise with that, we need to have on our graphs a title. We need to have labeled axes with, um, what are they called? Units. We need to have our trend lines with equations, deviation, error bars, R squared values. We need to have a legend and it should be color coded to make it easier. All of this sort of stuff, we need to make sure that our graphs are top notch. The other thing, um, tables, that would probably mean like, see how I have got the top part in a purple here in bolded letters. That isn't necessary, but if you just keep it white with no bolded, it's really hard to tell what is heading your table and the data in it. It really can be the little things that make big changes to your assignment. But I reckon that we have got that all sorted out. We don't need to worry about our communication marks. So let's start back up at the top. The first thing here is a considered rationale for the experiment. So in this case, and this is something that my teacher wanted us to do, but it is a pretty good idea for physics when you're using a lot of equations to find the variables involved in projectile motion or electromagnetism or whatever. So this is basically me just quickly defining all the terms I'm going to be talking about in this thing. Then I talk a little bit about the original experiment. Now keep in mind the only reason I define these things is because there is not a lot of theory on projectile motion out there. So we need to fill up our rationale with something else, something more of more substance. I talk a little bit about the original experiment which I've linked in appendix one and I talk about um, the results. Now this doesn't have to be too long. But I also mentioned the limitations. Literally, this one is three words and this one is four words. And I just mentioned that because that provides logical modifications later on. Now, this is something my teacher wanted me to do because sometimes it can be really difficult, especially for confirmers, to visualize what your experiment looks like in cases like this. And especially because I was trying to say, we had a launcher attached to a table, which then shot a ball onto another table of the same height, etc, etc. That was really, really difficult to explain. And I didn't take a photo of it. I just didn't cross my mind at the time. And I didn't, I was too lazy to set up the whole thing again. And I also thought a photo would look like a bit messy in my assignment. So what I did, and this only took me five minutes max maybe a bit longer, but five minutes max, I went onto a free diagram maker website and I just made little shapes to represent my little table, my protractor, my launcher, the ball in the launcher, the stopwatch, the landing table, all of that just to show what everything was looking like. And I had two, I had the setup, setup of the modified experiment and I showed um, another component of my experiment. I also just um, give a quick explanation as to what those figures mean. You should always have a little bit about what the figure is. 
I had a little bit of theory here about um, initial velocity and angles and how we can use that like velocity to um, calculate theoretical times and experimental gravity, which evaluates our accuracy of the experimental data. So if you're doing the same experiment as me, which is um, the effect of launch angle on time of flight, the way that you can find... Um, how accurate you were, how valid your experiment was, is if you calculate your experimental gravity and then compare it to the true value of gravity. And then that tells you how um, valid and accurate your experiment was. I then explained that I had a SUVAT equation and I used it to determine the relationship between time and launch angle and then how to find this experimental gravity and theoretical times. I showed the rearranging in here. That is something that could be pretty important. I then had a quick summary of the relationship that that showed. I did a bit of background on air resistance and just explaining why I was going to be ignoring it. I had a really, really quick um, line, one line about why this experiment is relevant. Please do not ramble on for yonks about why this experiment is relevant to the real world. Should be one, um, little sentence define your variables really really signpost them just so your teacher knows exactly what is going on and then at the very end of your rationale have your research question and i think that is a good time to segue into our research question so your research question for physics should follow the form of changing blank effects Okay, maybe I should put how. How does changing blank affect blank of whatever you're doing? And then what are we keeping constant? So here I say, how does changing launch angle, so that is my independent variable, affect the time of flight, which is the dependent variable of a projectile, while the mass and initial velocity remain constant? So just reminding them what I am not changing. So that is the form our research question needs to be in. And our question needs to be niche. It needs to be really, really focused down on exactly what we are looking at. It needs to tell the marker exactly what we were investigating. Don't do anything like, how does launch angle affect the traject like not mm, how does launch angle affect um projectile motion? That is way not specific enough. You should be looking at changing one variable. And the effect on one variable. So keep it simple. Keep it really specific to one thing. The other thing a lot of people seem to forget, and I regret not mentioning this in my other videos, is that your research question, and this is probably more relevant for your research investigation, is not fluid. I mean, is not fluid. It is fluid. So if you do the assignment and then realize your research question is sort of dog, you can change it to suit what you have written. Then we need to have a look at justified modifications to the methodology. So for this, we want to set it up in a table like this. Three columns, we need to have the nature of it. So refinement, redirection, or extension. I strongly recommend you do refinements and redirections. Don't worry about extensions. You need to say what the modification is, and then you need to justify that modification. Having this column here tells the marker, you justified it. They can give you that tick. If you don't have this column and you try and weave it into here, then it can get lost and it can get lost in your own mind and you don't do it properly or you do do it properly and the marker finds it difficult to identify. So you want to have this um, heading here. Now, what we have here is um, I say, so for example, I have refined my experiment, so made it better. I increased the number of trials. And then why did I do that? It reduces random error and it like allows outliers to be identified and removed, etc., etc. So refinement is making the current better. Then redirection is slightly changing the current. So I said I'm going to measure the time of flight instead of the range. So redirection is basically keeping everything else the same except changing the variable you're looking at. I said, what well, is the justification to this? Um, this one is a bit difficult, but it turns out you can say that it addresses the research question. And I had it eliminating errors because there were some problems with our original experiment. So that um, is the modifications there. For some reason, I remember the modifications on this one being somewhat difficult to do. 
The next one we want to look at is a methodology that enables collection of sufficient relevant data. Basically, do an experiment that you can get data that you can use. I had um, a group in my class who did the dumbest thing ever where they were rolling a ball off a plank of wood. And yeah, I, I don't know what they were trying to achieve there. And they ended up not achieving anything and having to redo their in entire experiment because their data meant nothing. So just go with the basic experiment. The last one is considered managements of risks and ethical or environmental issues. So we've got two words to unpack here and an or. The or tells me that we must have either ethical or environmental issues. We don't need to have both of them. But the and tells me that we need to have a risk and we need to have an ethical or environmental issue. So let's have a look here and I can guarantee you um, biology and chemistry are super easy for environmental um, issues but these ones not so much and you might find with this assignment specifically we actually do not have very many risks at all so this one um i didn't have an ethical one and i didn't have an environmental one and even though the syllabus says so that is completely okay because there is no possibility of there being an ethical or environmental issue in this experiment i actually probably should have said that and i'm surprised i didn't so this one was super hard. It was basically collegiate injuries and then you want to have your risk in one column and then how you dealt with that risk. Let's move on to the next chunk of marks. So the first one says appropriate application of algorithms, vis visual and graphical representation of data and that is demonstrated by correct and relevant processing of data. So what we want to do here is we want to start off with our raw data. So I've got my raw data here and then we want to process the data. Now here, my teacher made me do a flow chart of the process of data um, process. I don't think, I personally wouldn't, I, I don't understand why my teacher wanted me to do that. I've never had another teacher want that. I just don't think it is 100% relevant. I think you can say something like, I used Excel to do these calculations to find these things. I don't think you need this and unless your teacher tells you specifically they want it, I wouldn't include it. But what is important is our sample calculations. Most of us are going to do it all on Excel, but even if you do that, you need to show a sample calculation of everything. Even if it's something as simple as the mean time of flight. Label it here, do the calculation in math type and include the units. Remember this table does not count in your word count, this maths here. You keep going. As you can see in this assignment, I had a lot of sample calculations. See, this is some more of the bad formatting that messed up. Then we want to present our processed data. So I popped it in tables here, just a bunch of tables, just outlining everything to make it nice and neat. I had a lot of data in this one. And then we get to the real kicker, the graphs. Now, I already explained to you in the communication um, what our graphs should look like. If you are doing projectile motion, you are going to need to linearize your um, graph. So it is a sine relationship. You need to turn it into a linear one. And if you do electromagnetism, you might also need to do that. So keep that in mind. Under each graph, you should have a quick description and analysis. And then you just keep going, keep going, blah, 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 blah. So let's have a look here. Thorough identification of trends, patterns, or relationships. So that includes looking at your raw data and then looking at your process data and identifying everything. That may also mean saying, I expected to see this and I didn't. Or this, I am unsure if this is relevant, that sort of thing. So we really basically want to mention as much as we can while being as concise as possible. Now, I'm going to skip over this um, uncertainty and limitations of evidence for now and talk about the collection of sufficient and relevant raw data. That ties into this methodology point up here. Basically, you did a good experiment. That gets a tick. Now, I'm going to come back to limitations and uncertainty at the end. But first, let's talk about our justified conclusions linked to the research question. So in your conclusion, after you've yapped on about the trends and all that, you are going to come down here. Where's my conclusion? 
here we go and do this so to make sure that the marker knows you are answering your research question you say to answer the research question and then answer it you need to include data that um see i've got data data all of these different data points that is showing that is justifying that's where the justification comes in you should also see if you can get a reference in there to say this is what it should have looked like and this is what we got so you do need to do a bit of a comparison in there now the other thing you need to do in this conclusion is talk about reliability and validity. So that also says justified and don't worry about precision or anything like that, that is not in the syllabus, but I just have a little heading up here. So this is your chance to talk about any um, possibility of error you had, your percentage uncertainties, and you need to try and explain why this error occurred. Sometimes it is totally okay to say, I don't know why this happened, but I do say stuff like, um, the large stopwatch increment so um we didn't my stopwatch we used didn't have very many decimal places and this is a very very quick experiment and the other one was we used a smartphone and our eyes to analyze the time so that was another source of error so you talk about your sources of error here with some uncertainty calculations and then you also talk about if your experiment was valid so basically did it address the research question did it allow your data collection did it like address the theoretical relationship we were looking at. That is the sort of thing that we want to be talking about for validity. So reliability, error and uncertainty. Validity is how relevant was it to your experiment? Did you find out what you wanted to find out? Now, I do want to talk about this is the last thing here. So this is the one I sort of skimmed over because I like to do my limitations improvements and extensions all together because it cuts down on words and the improvements and extensions say logically derived from the analysis of evidence so figuring out the limitations counts in the analysis of evidence so if we derive our improvements and extensions from that evidence then that is logically derived so what i do is i make a quick little table like this i have the limitation the effect it had on the experiment and then the improvement or extension that follows it up i also split it into improvements and extensions now this one is pretty good because it also um helps you talk about your reliability and validity so i say smartphone videos and the human eye analyze the times this is an impre imprecision so that was my limitation um the effect it had was it introduced random error and sometimes we had to estimate the start or end time. And then to improve that, I said we should use motion sensor software position where the projectile launches and lands. So improvement is how can you make the experiment you did better? Let's have a look at the extensions. Extensions is what could I do next? What new thing could I explore? So I say only the effect of launch angle on time of flight was um, investigated. I do say that this didn't affect reliability or validity. And then I say to further investigate projectile motion, other variables such as height or horizontal projectile motion could be investigated. So we could, for horizontal projectile motion, that's like where you like shoot it off a cliff and it goes like pew. So that's what I said. I said we could investigate this instead. So extensions is instead, improvements is if we were to do it again, what should we do next time? Now, I think that is everything. We do need to have our 2,000 word limit. Um, make sure you know what the inclusions and exclusions are for that. Um, not much else I can think of. If you think I missed out on anything, please let me know. And if you liked this video, please like and subscribe.